Did Felicia get Emma off to school? She did. I rode down in the elevator with her. Oh, goodness. They're off. <laughs> Good for children to get back to their routines, you know? Even when their mothers come back from the dead? <laughs> Especially then. Yeah. She needs to know that you're here and you're alive. And that she doesn't have to guard over you and shackle herself to your legs. You don't fight back off to heaven. You know. I know it's the best thing to reassure her, make her feel safe, but... Honestly, if it were up to me, I would spend the entire day in bed cuddling with her. Well, we get to pick her up in five hours, so... All right. Are you okay, sweetheart? It would also be an incredible distraction from the fact that... Um, my husband is not with me. Yeah, I guess the reunion didn't go quite as you imagined with Patrick, did it? I have been dreaming about the day that I got home the second I realized I had been kidnapped. I knew exactly how it would go. I would go to the house and Patrick and Emma would be there waiting for me. And me to survive and help me to get home. But now that I'm home... You have to let go of the fantasy. <sighs> you do. You have to concentrate on reality. As painful as that is, their lives didn't stop. I didn't want their lives to stop. I mean, I, I would have hated it if Patrick and Emma were sitting there in that dark house staring at my picture for the last two years. You just want things to go back to normal. Well, that was the dream. Right. The dream that Jerry woke me up from the second he showed me the DVD of the nurse's ball and I learned about a person named Sabrina Santiago. Logically tortured for nearly two years. You cannot blame yourself for not anticipating this. Everyone thought I was dead, including Patrick. So uh, what did I expect him to do, become a monk? You did what any normal person would do. You clung to the truth, which is that people here loved you and that we would be overjoyed if you came back. Sure, Patrick is happy that I'm alive, Mom, but that doesn't change the fact that he's made other commitments. I'm not minimizing the fallout. Will there be adjustments? Yes, of course. Will there be heartache? Maybe. But none of that's on you. That is all Faison. All of it. I don't know. Before Faison even got his hands on me, when I thought that my HIV meds were failing and that there was a chance I could die, I left a DVD for Patrick in which I told him to move on, to find someone else to spend his life with, not only for himself, but for Emma's sake. So how can I blame him for doing just that. Nobody's blaming anyone here. We're just feeling our way through. Come on. Mom, when I got to this chapel, I got there at the very beginning of the ceremony and I saw the entire thing. And I, I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. When I had left that DVD for Patrick and I told him to move on because I thought I was going to die, I, it was just, it was an idea. It was a suggestion. I didn't actually think that there would be a living breathing human being that would come into my family and take my place. I mean, he did exactly what I told him to do. He found someone to love, he fell in love with her, and she fell in love with him too. Oh, Getting a little ahead of yourself here, Robin. You've had nearly two years to think about the day that you would come home. Patrick, he has had, had no time to absorb even I the know, I know, I'm not being fair. Well, you're being human, which I kind of prefer. Patrick asked me to go home with him last night. I was the one that said no because he did not break things off with Sabrina. So, I guess all I can do now is wait to hear from him. Listen. When you were taken from us, Patrick went to a really dark place. He was literally sick without you. He couldn't even get out of bed. I, I frankly was concerned that he was ever going to be himself again, let alone find joy. He did. He found it was Sabrina. Sabrina's a lovely girl. She is. She really supported him through a lot and helped him find his way back to himself, get himself together for Emma's sake, as, as well as for his own. But Sabrina's not the woman that he changed his life for. She's not the one he married. Or the one who gave him his beloved daughter. She's not you. Really. 
I honestly think Patrick will find his way back to you, sweetheart. I promise you that. I wish I was as sure of that as you are, Mom. Babies have been born. People have died. I saw Sam at the church. She's a widow. I mean, Jason's son has to grow up without his father. Yeah. I know how much Jason meant to you. I just can't believe he's gone. But, you know, it wasn't because of the brain tumor. You know that your serum saved his life. Only for Faison to shoot him in the back and dump him in the harbor. I know. And Edward Quartermain, I... I honestly thought he would outlive us all. <laughs> he lived long enough to save Emma's life. What do you mean? He sacrificed himself. When Jerry had taken this whole town hostage when he poisoned the water supply, there was one antidote left to save one person. And Tracy, she appropriated the dose. Well, she basically stole it to give to Edward. But he chose to give it to Emma. Oh, my God. He loved you, Emma, as much as he loved you. It's not all grim, Robin. Just look at the ring on Uncle Mac's finger and the smile on Felicia's face. If those two can find their way back together again after all they've been through, so can you and Patrick. I want to believe you, Mom, but it, it's just so difficult to not feel like an interloper who's coming in to steal the life that Patrick and Emma and Sabrina have built you together. You had this life. This was your life. These were the people you loved. You are allowed to want this back. I'm not sure it matters what I want. If Patrick didn't want Sabrina, then he would have broken it off with her last night. Listen to what you're saying right now. Would Patrick be the man you love so much if he could so easily cut ties with a blameless woman who has supported him all this time that you couldn't through no fault of your own? You're right. You're right. He was about to commit his life to her. He had said his vows to her. It was completely unrealistic to think that he would just say sorry and walk away. That's what I was trying to say last night, that there is time. You don't have to make these decisions immediately. But they do have to be made eventually. And I can't say that I would blame Patrick if in the end he decides that I'm his past and Sabrina is his future. I gotta get out of here, get some air. It's really stuffy in here. Why don't we go down to the waterfront? We could have some brunch and I could take you for a drive. I tell you, as police commissioner, one of the things I love is the fact that I can drive as fast as I want. Nobody can stop me. And there's a stretch of road I'd like to take you there. It's really cool. I love that the main perk of your job is that you can drive as fast as you want to. Yeah. That's our secret, though. I don't want to be a bad example to my officers. Mom, would you... Would you mind if we did that another time? I just... You need to be alone. I, I just need to walk around and clear my head a bit. I don't want to crowd you. That's impossible. <laughs> I'm very greedy for you right now. I love you so much. I'm so thankful that you're alive. I am. I could shackle myself to your leg right now and follow you around. But since we marched the lamb off to school, I should probably tough it out. looking after Patrick and Emma and for rescuing me and keeping me sane. You're my hero, Mom. You always will be. And you are mine. You're my hero. <laughs> Is anyone there?